So as far, I think <laughs> I, I read a really interesting, or I think I heard it actually from an earnings call, but something interesting you said is one of the top five most frequent trade-ins for Model 3 is a Prius, right? Yeah. Uh, which okay. starts at, you know, 20-something thousand dollars, and they obviously have massive economies of scale. Do you think there's room, I mean, Tesla has Model 3, Model S, and Road stirring up. Is there room for possibly an even less expensive quality yeah. electric car experience? Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, I, think, I think in order for us to get to, like, let's say, ultimately getting to like a, tw a $25,000 car, um, uh, th that's, uh, that's something we could, we could do, but it's probably... If we really work really hard, I think maybe we could do that in three years. Does it come years. with time and scale, or just? Yeah, it's a, bit of, it's a bit of both. Yeah, because like the the key to making things affordable is is like designing is, is like design and technology improvements as well as scale. So if you think of like say um, phones, um, like the very earliest like the earliest cell phones, like I don't know if you remember, <laughs> uh, I'm probably like dating myself here, but uh, like the original Wall Street. <laughs> where, where the guy's like walking down the beach and he's got like the it's like on a, like giant a, phone. He's carrying on like a briefcase <laughs> yeah. kind of thing. They're massive. Yeah. Like massive, massive phone. Yeah. And, and like all it could do is phone. Yep. <laughs> yep. Um, and like had like 30 minutes of battery life and that kind of thing. Um, now, at that time, uh, in the absence of technology improvements, like no amount of money, no amount of scale could have made that phone affordable. That'd be a lot of engineering iterations, a lot of design iterations. Um, and, and we're probably, I don't know, on the 30th version of, of, of a cell phone. Or, um, and, and, and with each successive design iteration, uh, you can add more capability, you can design, you can integrate more things, you figure out uh, better ways to produce it. Uh, so it actually gets better and cheaper. But it's like, it's, it's like a natural progression of any new technology that it, it takes multiple versions and a large volume in order to make it affordable. Gotcha. Is there anything in the near future of Tesla that you're really excited about? Yeah, there's a lot of things actually. Um, I mean, really, like we've got definitely way more product ideas than we uh, have resources to execute. We were just talking about this uh, with with my team, uh, just like, hey guys, what you know, what should we focus on? And now in the past, we've only done one car at a time. Um, and but as you know, as we go into the future, we've got to like basically figure out how to walk and chew gum. <laughs> so it's like it's like okay, how do we do two products at the same time? But still have enough resources that both products are great. Right. Um, and so we're gonna, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna try to do, you know, two products. Um, one of them for sure is is like the Model Y, you know, sort of compact SUV, um, comparable price point to the to the Model Three. Uh, then there's uh, the semi, the pickup truck, and the and the next gen roadster. Yeah. Like. A next gen roadster is kind of like dessert. We got to so talk about like, that. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's super exciting, mm -hmm. but it's like, and I think there's definitely some value to, to doing it to show that an electric car can be faster than a gasoline car in every way. Yes. Uh, so I think there's like, you know, because it's still this sort of like halo effect of 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 the gasoline sports cars, because like in terms of top speed, they still have the best top speed. Yeah. Um, so that halo effect that I was gonna basically every metric possible seems like really ambitious. Like there's a lot of things that people. People like me kind of accept that, like I love my electric car, but I, I know it's not going to put down lap times 30 laps in just because there's yeah, so restrictions. Yeah, so we exactly, we've got to work on that. Yeah. yeah. In okay. fact, I was, I was actually, um, I was just talking to the team, I was like, uh, you know, I think we got some headroom there. Yeah. Um, oh, are we going to talk about track mode? Yeah, sure. Oh, yeah, because oh, I, I okay. had a, a very short experience with track mode with Model oh, okay, 3. Okay. Yeah. So I love, so obviously Roadster is going to be, yeah, that, that Halo car. And if we're confident it's going to be an amazing car, I hope it's that car to beat, essentially. Yeah. But then bringing track mode down to Model 3 brings that fun experience to a lot more people, that yeah, higher volume. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so, so it's kind of like, um, you know, like, uh, like, we're like basically a bunch of nerds here. So, um, <laughs> yeah. um, obviously, <laughs> I don't know what gave it away. Yeah. But like, like the, you know, so with track mode, you want to uh, open up a lot of settings. Mm -hmm. So like you can adjust settings. And it's kind of like an expert user mode. Um, and, and you can sort of um, adjust uh, traction control, uh, adjust like bat battery temperature, um, uh, um, you know, brake, like you can basically uh, configure a bunch of things. Um, and it will tell you like, hey, you know, if you do this, it's a bit risky. Like you're gonna yeah. wear out your brakes a little sooner. Uh, it's like, you might blow a circuit, you know, <laughs> like, like, 
but like it'll be clear like yeah. you know um, like this, you is, know. this is the risk that you're taking yeah it's kind of like if, if you have a, a graphics card and a computer you can like go in there and you can change the settings and you can like overclock things yeah um, and like okay but you know uh, <laughs> so that's going to be all that will be in track mode and you'll yeah. be able to see that and mess with it yeah that's cool yeah it'd be cool and you can like try different things and Weird. um yeah it'd be fun uh, a little more on roadster because I, I made a video about it just after the event. I was sad I couldn't be there, but I'm a day one deposit because I was that excited. Okay. Uh, but I was wondering after you made that announcement, one, you said, I think I quote, plenty of space. What does that mean? Oh, you mean like, like, like it won't be cramped inside. Like, like basically, um, if, you're, if you're a tall dude, you'll yeah. be able to sit in there. How tall are you? A six, one and a half. Okay, so I feel like if you're comfortable in there, a lot of people will be. Yeah, and, and then like my brother's 6'4". So and is he like, comfortable in there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. And, and, and Franz is like 6'3". I don't know, he's okay. pretty tall. And um, then my other question was uh, the side mirrors. This has been a theme in, in the past with prototypes and cars that we've seen before they come out. They don't have yeah. mirrors. Regulatory, they have to have mirrors. Is there an advantage to Actually, not having mirrors? Or is, yeah, there, yeah, yeah. is it just aerodynamic or is there more to it? Now it's 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 actually surprisingly um, how how the mirrors, particularly at high speeds, can have um, quite a big effect on the drag of a car. They're like little air brakes, basically. Like typical car uh, side mirrors reduce highway range by around five percent. Wow. Yeah, it's it's pretty intense. So you can see in a wind tunnel, like you can see, you know, when you see like those sort of smoke trails in the wind tunnel, little you can pockets. see just how much. Yeah, they're yeah. like they're just like air brakes. So to be aerodynamic, you actually want kind of like a teardrop. Uh, shape, so it's like it's it, it doesn't end in like a bluff, right? Because it creates a low pressure zone behind the the mirror, but, and so you'd have to like have a kind of a, almost like a cone behind the, the mirror, or 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 blend it with the body or something like that. Okay. So it's like they're actually surprisingly draggy. Um, now, a, a manufacturer is required to have side view mirrors, but I I believe that a uh, the owner is not. Like you're, I, I think you're like. <laughs> Okay. You can modify things, like at least in the U.S. You can, if you, uh, the, the owner can modify things. The rule is about manufacturing, not it's driving. Very much about manufacturers are very tightly constrained. Okay. Um, and it's actually one of the things that makes it very hard to to make um, a, a car that uh, looks good and has a good performance and aerodynamics and everything. Because it's like you got you got all these constraints and there's so many rules you need to follow. Um, so it, it's very challenging to make a car. Uh, look good.